Welcome to Rome State Community College Theater. My name is Michael Golubeski. I'm Associate Professor of Speech and Theater here at the college, as well as advisor of the Playmakers and director of the play you're here to see tonight, A Christmas Story. Can you believe it's almost Christmas? Okay, so I have four little girls. I'm very excited about Christmas every year. I get really into what we do. And this year, I've, I've kind of gone a little bit overboard by doing a whole play production of it. So my daughter's actually in the play here. So we've been spending time dreaming about Christmas, about the season that's coming. I couldn't be any more excited. And you guys came to enjoy a little part of our Christmas offering. So thank you so much for coming to join us tonight. It's nice and chilly outside when it's warm and toasty. We'll bring up the lights and tell a really warm, heartwarming story, which might bring you back to days gone past. So that's the best part of the movie. That's what you like so much, because it reminds us of a time, a long time ago, when Christmas was a little bit fresher in our, in our hearts, and, and, and we relive those moments tonight. We're glad you're here. Did, can you smell all that that's going on, the apple pie that's about to be done? Actually, it's, it's coming. It's, I also have a, its cousin, a cherry pie. I, I couldn't pick which one to serve tonight and set, try to sell it at intermission, so I decided I would make both. I hope that's okay with you. I also have Mayfield ice cream was uh, on sale, so I bought Mayfield vanilla. I like Mayfield anyway, but it just happened to be on sale, so that's good. So we're offering Mayfield, put a little scoop of Mayfield on some apple pie. And then I also, right now, when the snack comes out, I'm putting in, as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna go scurry back and make Ghirardelli brownies. They're, ch they're the chocolate supreme brownies. It's got an actual extra fudge pack I'm gonna, I put in there. So I'm going to put those in, and I'm going to put ice cream on those. That makes it a brownie a la mode. So if you're hungry and you got a little room for dessert, you should come and visit me at the intermission. It's like a magic trick I'm doing to your brain right now, right through your nostrils. <laughs> it works. I'm also, wait, oh my gosh. Tonight I have a death by chocolate cake. I haven't even sliced it yet. What else do I have up there? Ooh, I have a turtle pie, like a, like a pie, a turtle cheese pie, no, like a cheesecake, it's a pie, like a chocolate, turtle chocolate pie, that's what it is. I also have, oh, I know what I have, I have actual cheesecake too, like chocolate chip and chocolate swirl cheesecake. Wait, I have something else, you guys, is this making you hungry? Yeah. You okay? You're gonna make chocolate. it the last one? Chocolate! I, no, 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 I actually have, I do have, I have a, a caramel cake tonight. It's caramel. a caramel. <laughs> caramel, caramel, <laughs> potato, potato. Anyway, it's got a caramel, is that right? Frosting on top, and it's got yellow cake inside. It's delicious. Wait, there's more. I'm missing some. Anyway, I'm going to brew some coffee, some 8 o'clock coffee. I'll have all the desserts ready to go for intermission, so plan for that. You should turn off your cell phone ringers right now because it's too distracting when you watch a play to have these on. So I'm going to turn off mine because it's on and I'm giving a public speech. So there we go. I'm off. And also, other things, you, you shouldn't take flash photography tonight because we're going to take pictures uh, probably tomorrow night or maybe Friday night and we'll have an archive. So flash photography really dis or disorients us up here on stage. So if you refrain from that. And we're actually videotaping it. We might have something we can share, but it's secret. You're not supposed to do that. But we'll have a little copy for, you know, family's purposes. Say, so, you know, we did this show. Also, this is an exit by which you enter. Uh, also, is an exit in case of an emergency. Run! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> do that way, if you don't mind, please. This is dark back here, so that's what I recommend. But, if, you know, you know, this is also a way out. So, just remember, that you're going to be in darkness when you go that way. So we have two more shows after tonight. Oh, you guys are gonna be sad. You guys are all, they're all close. And I know, there's a whole bunch of sad people up here because they don't wanna say goodbye to the wonderful world they've created and the people that they get to play, portray. And that's gonna bleed over to the performance you're gonna see tonight. So you wanna make sure you tell everybody the great thing that you saw tonight and so they can come back and see two more shows, tomorrow night at seven and Friday night at seven. Okay, I'm done blah, blah, blah. You guys ready to make magic? Yeah. It's time for a little Christmas magic. So put your hands together for a Christmas story.
Tis the holiday season, and Christmas fever is upon us. Windows are garlanded in red and green, and yards are alight with plastic reindeer, and million crowds of shoppers fill the street stores and malls. I just put up my tree last week. I had to assemble it first, of course. Then I threw an artificial yule log on the propane operated fire and began to reminisce about Christmas's past. The holidays tend to do that. I found myself remembering another Christmas in another time, in another place. And there it is, the house on Cleveland Street in Homan, Indiana, where I spent the best three years of my childhood. Yes, sir, Homan, Indiana. Ragged vacant lots, American Legion halls, and bowling alleys woven together with a compact web of high tension wire, telephone lines, and sewer pipes. This time every year, the wind would come screaming over frozen Lake Michigan, laying down great drifts of snow. The air would crack and sing, and the power lines would creak into caked ice. Christmas was on its way. Lovely, beautiful, glorious Christmas, around which the entire kids' year revolved. Hey, Schwartz, wait up! Flick and Schwartz, my two best friends. Started any Christmas shopping yet? We got most of it finished. Man, you're done early. What'd you get? Come over here. To us kids, the most important thing next to what am I getting for Christmas? was what am I getting my parents for Christmas? The selection of presents was always done with greater secrecy than a State Department spy operation. I haven't figured out what to get for my mother yet, but for my father... What? What? What'd you get? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> hey, that's a storm. For my father, I got... Wow. A new flip gun. Oh, the sheer creative brilliance of it was staggering. In the land of rolling newspaper and wire fly spotter, the man with a flick gun was king. You know what I'm gonna get my father? What? A rose that works. What? We'd all seen these magnificent appliances in Pulaski's candy store. Bright red celluloid and rubber bolt for pocket use. A gift to anyone with treasure.
the end of every broadcast, they announced a call out a string of numbers. Kids all across the country translated those numbers into the secret message, getting the real truth straight from Orphan Annie. Each day without a decoder pin postponed my spiritual and intellectual growth. <laughs> Come eat your oatmeal. To a kid, the time it takes to get something you sent for in the mail is longer than the time it would take to build the pyramids single-handed using the number three erector set, the one without the motor. Brandy. My kid brother Randy was a notoriously picky eater. Most that he wore more oatmeal than he ate. <laughs> Would you stop that noise? Eat that food or I'm gonna give you something to cry about. My mother was more so. She invented a game to give the little run to eat. Randy, can you show me how the little piggy goes? Okay, show me again. Yes, yes, now here's a new trough. Show me how the little piggy eats it all up. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, little piggy. Bill, Bill, Bill. Ha! Look at this! What is it? Another contest. $50,000 giant jackpot puzzle. The old man was hooked on contests. He entered them all. Matched the baby picture, find the hidden object, and sports, the old man knew sports. What National League team won the World Series in 1907? Easy, Chicago Cubs. The old man never lost hope. He believed the Warriors would come to him who was faithful, persevering, and mailed a deadline. What was the name of the Lone Ranger's nephew's horse? Lone Ranger's nephew? His horse? Who could possibly know the answer to that? Victor. His name's Victor. How'd you know that? Everybody knows that. <laughs> oh, everybody knows that. Everybody. Victor belonged to Dan Ring, the Lone Ranger's nephew. You see, when the Texas Rangers run into Brian's gap. Uh, never mind. <laughs> on and on the contest was marched, all judged for originality, neatness, and aptness of thought. All decisions, of course, were final. Where there's blank. Pull the trigger. 
You can't miss. You can't miss? It's great for shooting targets and varmints. And hey, tell Dad it makes a swell Christmas gift too. <laughs> but supplies are limited, so you need to get on down to your local dealer right away. You don't want to miss out. I don't want to be left out. I got it a little game. What about the sneakers? Whip that too. Have some breakfast. I'll just have a cup of coffee. Texaco blank cheap. Fire. What? Fire. Fire! No, 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 the answer is Ed Vian, the perfect fool. It's a fire cheap. Oh, oh, right, sure, of course. I knew that. Everybody knows that. Easy. <laughs> Open Road for Boys was a magazine that sold dreams, fantasies, and incredible adventures. My dream that Christmas was that BB gun. I fantasized adventures where an I and I alone. I stood between my tiny public family and insensate evil. He carries here, it's Bradley the kid to save us from the bad guys. And he's carrying old blue, his legendary official red rider, 200 shot carbine action range model air rifle. With a compass. And this thing which tells time. We are right into the star. Well, Ralphie the Kid, we sort of figure it's Black Bart and his desperados. And they're having kind of water pistols and big rubber daggers. Yes, sir. And, and they come in by air in a tin zeppelin with little wheels and a friction motor. I'm saying desperado alive. He said to me once again, but it's kind of vocal. Well, we'll break it back out of the book, see? Oh, my God. It's Ralphie the Kid. Insurmountable by any means known to kiddom. 
Immediately, I went to damage the trouble and began rebuilding. <laughs> The boom had been lowered, and I was under it. I figured I'd better change the subject to draw attention away from my master plan. Hey, Dad! Hmm? I, I bet you can't guess what I got you for Christmas. Let's see, um, is it a new furnace? <laughs> That's a good one, Dad. <laughs> Franny, would you be still and eat? Never mind, never mind. Okay, oh, uh, let's uh, get you washed up. Nobody could win this contest. These questions are impossible. Like what? The voice of Snow White, the Disney animated classic. Adriana Casalotti. Casalotti. Ralph, why don't you go get ready for school? Each used car is new, because it was to them. What? The new car. Did you start it? Uh, yeah, engine's warming up. Should be toasty by now, but she's got a good heater in her. Like the youngest kid in the family who always wore hand-me-down clothes, the old man always drove hand-me-down cars. It was partially economics and partially the old man's pioneer spirit. Anybody could buy a new car. It took a brave man to buy one with a shady past. <laughs> it's not running. What? I'll be a dog nabbit cinnamon dish. <laughs> <laughs> Preparing for school during the Northern Indiana winter is like getting ready for extended deep sea diving. Long johns, three pairs of socks, high tops, overshoes, corduroy knickers, flannel lumberjack shirt, four sweaters, fleece lined leatherette sheepskin coat. Gloves, mittens over the gloves, stocking cap, e flap hat over the stocking cap, and then a scarf wound around and around until only the faint glint of two eyes peering through a mound of booby dry clothes lets you know there was a kid in there. <laughs> Somewhere. Oh, no. Ralphie, come on, we're gonna be late. The master plan begins. It was time. My mother would throw her shoulder against the door, fighting the wind as it came howling into the living room, raking the rug with icy fury, and then we were launched like astronauts into frigid space, the airlock instantly sealing behind us. <laughs> Scattered out over the icy wasteland, we leaned into the wind. Tiny befurred jumps of humanity in the skies as well as volleyballs and feet. Toiling painfully over the country, waddling under the weight of frost covered clothing, moving onward. Ever onward to Warren G. Harding School. Hold on, they're a bit! They never in their minds to stay inside during the winter. Even during blizzards that would have driven lesser creatures in other states to stay inside and dine on their immediate fairness. Winter weather was just something we accepted, like oxygen, gravity, and parents. Oh, and bullies. Every neighborhood had them. And the lines were clearly drawn, like a kid caste system. You were either a bully, a toady, or one of the nameless rabble of victims. The bully legend of home in Indiana was Scut Farkas. <laughs> Scut Farkas. What a rotten name. What kind of parent names a kid Scut? <laughs> but I had to admit, the name did fit him. He was a wiry, malevolent, sneevely, snively bully. His lips curled cruelly over green teeth, and he had yellow eyes. So help me God, yellow eyes. Every kid I knew was afraid of stuff, Marcus. If he was nice to you, so much said hi, you dared to feel safe and warm inside. But mostly he'd shoot you in the mouth. <laughs> Randy lay there like a slug. It was his only defense. At one time or another, Fergus treated every kid in the class to a good, crisp, tin and snapping arm twist. He gave us his refresher course on a rotating basis. We figured he had a list and just checked us off in turn. But Blake caught up with Farkas more than any of the rest of us. Hey, that's my star! 
It was, his arm was always sore. There was never enough healing time between.